Right, so then we're going to have a look at making a fish tank game. Now this is based on the work you've probably already done doing a simple fish tank animation. Now I'm going to move on from where I finished showing you before. So yours might look a little bit different if you've added some different characters to your animation. But the basic process is the same. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new character and add some keyboard controls to it. So the first thing we're going to do is um, get a new sprite. Now hopefully we remember this from last time, uh, but I'm going to click on choose sprite from library, I'm going to choose animals, and I'm going to choose the shark. Um, there is a reason why I'm choosing the shark compared to others, it's because he's got some costumes that we can flip between to animate, but you could use other things as well. Uh, then I'm going to click OK. Now here's our shark's been added. Now we need to get a couple of things sorted out. One, I want to get some animation done and the controls, as I've already said. So let's go to control, let's our events even. When green flag clicked, I want this to happen forever, and I want the looks to change. So let's just get to the costume changes. Now there are two costumes on the shark. I'm just going to quickly set the two costumes and put a little delay in between them. Probably half a second. 0.5 and 0.5. Now if you click on costumes you can see this shark A, shark B with his mouth open and a sick shark. I'm not going to use C. You could delete it but I'm going to keep it in there just in case. So that's why I'm specifying switch between. If I double click to test it, <coughs> I've made a mistake here so that should be shark B. So that way we can fix it straight away. So there you go. So there is the shark animating. So I just wanted to get that done to start with. Then we need to put some keyboard controls in. Now there's a number of different ways of doing keyboard controls. I'm going to show you a way that you might not use before, but it gives you a nice fluid motion. So I'm going to pull on when clicked. I'm going to click pull on forever because I need this to happen all the time. And then instead of you clicking down here of an event where when space key is pressed or when up arrow is pressed, which you might have used before, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to click if something then and what I'm actually going to do is put in I'll just show you what it's going to be so if in this case a space crew pressed then do something the reason why I'm doing this is it makes the control system more fluid if you've done the other version before try it this way and you should see a difference so I'm just going to pull on all the bits I need um, I'm just going to duplicate this is a good trick if I can duplicate it duplicates the bit below so because I want four, and then I want two of them to do with moving backwards and forwards, and then I want two to do with turning. So when I push the up arrow, we're going to move forward ten steps. When I push the down arrow, we're going to move minus ten steps. When I move, push the right arrow, we're going to turn right, and then when you push the left arrow, we're going to turn left. Let's just double check this works. Uh, green flag clicked. As you can see, the shark is spinning and he's moving around. Now, unlike the other sprites where I wanted it to bounce from the edge and also I wanted it to only flip, in order to make it move around the screen, you need it to be able to rotate. So it does look a little bit weird when he's upside down, but you are allowing him to move around the screen quite freely. Right, let's stop this. Now, to turn this into a bit more of a game, I want to be able to eat the other sprites on the uh, background. Now you can again do this a couple of different ways, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to add a piece of code to each of the other sprites so when they are eaten by the shark they're going to vanish. Um, this is the quickest way of doing it because it only me means you need one piece of code. Okay, So I'm going to click on fish one, I'm just going to do it on him and test him out. So we're going to start with green flag clicked. We want it to happen all the time, always forever, because otherwise it only happen once. And then I want if, I'm going to do it this way. So if it's touching the shark, then, so if this touches the shark, then I want it to uh, hide. I want it to look and it hides. Um, now that's going to give you the effect of it being eaten. It, it's hidden. Now, because you need to tell the, the program to do every single step. If you don't tell it to unhide, to show it, it's going to stay hidden. And so to make it a bit more of a game, I'm actually going to make it, after about five seconds, make it reappear. Otherwise, after a, ten seconds of play, you're going to eat all the fish. Uh, so then we can go show. Now, I'm going to quickly play this, and you'll spot a problem 
with it straight away, but this is just to demonstrate ha how it works. So as we're playing, and he vanishes, and in five seconds he'll reappear. But what's slightly odd about this is if he touches the tail, look, he vanishes, because any part of the shark. Now, that's absolutely fine. If you want it to work like that, that's brilliant. But if you want to be a bit more... Uh, if you want to make it a bit more sensitive and more specific to him eating it, you can set it up so it, when it, the mouth touches the fish, uh, it will then vanish, which I think is a better way of going. You want the mouth to eat it to make it look like it's eating it. Now that means changing this touching part, and it, the way to do it is to actually look at colour. Now when you go to sensing, there's a couple of different choices. So we're going to change touching shark for touching a colour. Now the thing is you need to pick a colour that's not really on the background. So something that's completely different. Now I normally choose purple, but any colour that isn't on the background or anywhere in the game will work. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to costumes on the shark, and I'm going to edit it. Now, I'm going to click, or oh, I'm going to zoom in a bit. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make on this one, so when his mouth's open, I'm going to colour in the white bits of his teeth. And so that way, when the, this colour touches the purple fish, it will then hide. So instead of the whole shark, this colour has to touch the shark. Now, I normally pick purple, but you could, it could be anything. I'll make it pink to make it easier for everyone to see what's going on. But it can be any colour. Um, I'm going to use the fill tool. And it's really simple. It can take just a couple of seconds just to fill all the white bits of the teeth. You don't even have to do all of them, just probably the ones at the front. That is plenty, that will make it work. I'm going to click, and yeah, that's fine. And so you can see, you can't even see the pink actually, but it is there. So now, I'm going to go back to Purplefish, and we go back to Scripts. And so now touching colour. Now this is the bit which is a little bit difficult. You've got to click, and then as you're moving around your, the screen, do you see the colours changing? Now I need to do this really carefully and when it changes to pink, there you go, done. So if touching the colour pink, which I know is on the teeth, hide it. So now when we play the game, we've got to wait for him to come back. And there he's reappeared, and so now if I go towards him, he's touched the teeth and he is vanished. And if he touches any other part of the shark, he won't disappear. So I try and get him to touch my tail. See, it doesn't work. So you have to sort of actively go after him with the mouth, and then he vanishes. Now, in order to get this uh, code onto the other fish, I'm just going to click stop. It's just a simple matter of just dragging this. We don't need this bit anymore. Drag it in there, get rid of it. If I drag this to this fish, then drag this to this fish or the octopus. Now it's on the octopus and it is on fish too. So that way um, you don't have to do any other sort of program. Once you've done it working once, it'll work. So now if I go around I should be able to eat all of the fish. Great. Come here. There you go. Yeah. Now what you can do at this point is also add a score if you'd like to. Um, the way you add a score is very simple. Uh, you go down to data, you're going to make a variable called score, and this is for all the sprites, and then basically we're going to have to go to the stage and do a little bit of setup, but what you're going to do at this point, so on each of the fish, so you're going to have to go and add this to each fish, is uh, if it's touching the colour pink and it hides it, at that point you want to change the score by one, so it adds one to the score, you've got to do this on each one. And then, uh, and then it reappears. And then it reappears after that. Uh, you do need to do a little bit of housekeeping and make sure when the game starts, and you could just add it here to set the score to zero. Otherwise, well, if you play the game again and again and again, the score doesn't reset. So if we just start the game again, so now as you can see, two, three, should we have to get 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. 
and point five. Something to challenge yourself with and take it to the next step is could you add a timer to see how, ma how many you can eat in a set amount of time? Thank you.